Oh my god. Femboy69 actually gets the date with the girl he's always daydreaming about, Sophia. But as the relationship gets on, Sophia starts to realise how pathetic Femboy69 actually is. All he does is play this video game, Destiny 2, 24-7. He doesn't even go outside. But then, Sophia sees you. You are not like Femboy69. You clearly look like you go to the gym. You're on self-improvement, improving mentally and physically, pursuing your purpose. Sophia leaves Femboy69 for you and Femboy69 is left heartbroken. 17. 17 is when I had my very, very first relationship. That's quite young. I realize that is quite young. I wasn't even actually 17. It was like 16 turning 17. So it was actually more like 16 that I had my very first loving relationship. This relationship, it went on for like a year. So it was like a long-term relationship. I genuinely full on fell in love with this girl we were literally talking to each other on like calls and stuff you know talking about how like literally our future our future plans so far down the line like our kids <laughs> like we were talking that far into the future like the jobs that we were gonna do the kids that we were gonna have yeah we're gonna be the high school sweethearts that met in like secondary school and married and stayed together all these years you can probably tell that didn't quite happen <laughs> so yeah after a year i went through my first breakup as a 17 year old lad and i was quite scrawny i was quite skinny i was quite pathetic i was very much like femboy69 younger sean younger me and femboy69 they're kind of the same person i'm not gonna lie to where i got the idea from and i remember that my very first breakup i did all the bad things every single thing that could have made the breakup period last longer the heartache I did. I did all the bad habits. I'm going to be completely honest in this video because if you're going through a heartbreak right now, my experience and my honesty is what's going to help you. So I'm going to be completely honest, but you're going to sit down and think at some points, damn, Wilder, you did that? <laughs> damn, what's wrong with you? You're going to be thinking that at some points. You know what? Look, I made a lot of mistakes and I've learned a lot from them. You know, I have to own up to that. I remember, you know, when my very first breakup, we sat down at this bench that we'd always talk about where we kind of, I first asked her out and then you know it's the first time i put my arms around her shoulder this is like a very like significant part of our memories this one bench that watches the river and i remember that's where we broke up and uh, she said that she was going shopping in town and i said oh why not i join you as a first day as friends can you imagine how weird that would have been <laughs> such an awkward like thing to say oh yeah we just broke up let's spend the whole day together that's normal she kind of looked at me with this confused face like okay and uh, we spent the whole day as friends, but we kind of did all the things that a couple would. She was going out shopping, trying different clothes. I was sat there kind of like saying, yeah, that looks nice. Yeah, that doesn't. Eh, you know, what? I love that. Uh, we went out, had food. I went back to her parents' place. They dropped me off home and I walk up the lane about two steps in. I sit by this tree and I just start bursting in tears, sort of realizing like, damn, it's over finished i tried to stay friends with her after the breakup but she kind of had already moved on because obviously you know the breakup doesn't happen just randomly you know things are kind of tough a couple months before the breakup so she kind of already mute mute <laughs> yeah she was mewing every day <laughs> no she kind of already moved on as where i was stuck so I tried to stay friends, but she was kind of going out with other guys. I couldn't deal with that, even though she had every right to. Yeah, you know, because we broke up. And, you know, looking at my scrawny ass at the time, I didn't, you know, I don't blame her. And I remember that trying to stay friends and going through this heartbreak period, it was literally like soul crushing. And I ended up giving in to every single bad habit known to man. My friends heard about the breakup and I kind of had neglected them for a long time. I kind of like, oh no, sorry guys, I'm gonna hang out with my girlfriend today. Yeah, did that for like a year. They kind of contacted me. I was like, hey, Sean, you good? You want to go out, man? You want to go to the gym? We'll help you. And my stupid ass pushed them away and said, no, I'm okay. I'm just going to deal with this by myself. I'm just going to sit alone in silence and play Destiny 2. Femboy69 is genuinely just a younger me. And uh, I pushed my friends away. The masculine men in my life, I pushed them away. I dealt with my breakup in silence. 
I played Destiny 2 pretty much 24-7 all day and it was the summer holidays we broke up so I could. I played all day. I wouldn't even leave my room to go piss. I would piss in a bottle. My food source was like this processed like powdery chicken soup and that's what I had for meals, morning, breakfast, and night. My dad started becoming very worried for me because he was seeing all this. I did every single bad habit. I neglected my friendship. I played video games all day. Anytime I did go out with friends it would be just to drink. I went to more parties than usual, not because I wanted to enjoy the actual party, because I thought, oh yeah, I can get drunk. That's how bad my mental health got to. Even indulging in some illicit substances, which I will not name because I do not want to get demonetized. I really lost it, mentally and physically. You can probably think that, yeah, that's quite a bad breakup, you know, that I did not deal with that well at all. Well, let's, let's think about our second breakup now. Now, it's two years later. Well, not two, it's like a year later. I've gotten over her, I've managed to move on. It took a very long time, but I, I got there. You know, I managed to move on and I was ready to get out there and I found a new relationship. It was only like three, four months. You know, it wasn't long and then we both split it off mutually and it didn't end up in bad reasons. It just, you know, we were both pursuing like kind of different goals in life. So we ended up just drifting apart naturally. And I remember leaving this breakup. One of my friends from before messaged me again. He heard about my breakup and he this is me. Do you want to go to this new Japanese restaurant? It's got pretty good food. And I was about to do the same thing as before. I was about to say, nah, I'm gonna deal with this in silence. I'm gonna play Destiny too. But then I, I literally remember saying to myself, you know what? No. And I responded, yes, let's go right now. He picked me up. We drove down to the, kind of the big city where this place was and we had a meal together. I ordered two giant ramen bowls, more than I needed, but I was kind of like coping. I was kind of like stress eating. And I remember leaving that day with a huge smile on my face. And I was like, I just had a really good day with my friend, man. That was a lot of fun. And then obviously like the sadness hit me, but I started doing more things with friends like that. I started going out more with them to the gym, going out on hikes, going out to the restaurants. There's one thing that we used to always do and that was going on late night drives and like kind of see like the dark and the night and the woods at night. I started doing more things with my friends, going to the gym more and meditating. I tried meditating for the very first time in my life. I tried gratitude journaling for the very first time in my life. I started reading books. I started learning about different types of books, such as Where the Superior Man, Atomic Habits, The Rules of the Mind, or The, the Rules of Life, it's something like that. Wabi Sabi, a lot of like information based like books, almost as if I was learning in school, not drinking, not smoking, not doing any sort of bad habits actually. And I was so busy with these friends and all the good habits that I kind of didn't have enough time to think about my breakup. Yes, I was sad. I was still sad. You can't get rid of that emotion. I'm sorry, man. I wish I could do that for you, but I can't. You know, you enjoyed your time with this lovely lady of yours and then things split apart. You enjoyed the memories, but you know, that's come to an end. I can't get rid of that pain or sadness. But even though I was feeling sad, I was so busy to think about the breakup and I actually, those good habits, became almost my coping mechanism instead of the old bad habits. So you can tell from my first breakup and my second breakup, my second one, I felt a lot better. I know. I know right now it is hard. You know, you've just heard my story and I know if you're going through a breakup right now, it is very difficult. It's not easy. But let's press pause for a moment and I want you to think about five years from now. Just think about you in five years you've gotten over this person. And if you're still on self-improvement, you've been meditating every day, cold showers every day, journaling every day, learning every single day, pursuing your purpose, and actually going to the gym every single day. You've got the best physique in your life. You're mentally the most happiest you've ever been. You are so close to your purpose that you could literally touch it. Imagine the kind of women that you would be meeting then in five years time. The amount of different people, different guys, different girls that you'll be meeting. Maybe, maybe even the one, the one true love of your life. <laughs> Sophia, yeah, maybe you meet her in the future. If there's one key message I want you to take that will help you get over this breakup, this heartache, this pain, it's your brotherhood, those male friends. You may feel that like you don't wanna have anything to do with them. You may feel you wanna be alone right now. You may feel so crushed by this heartache and breakup that you feel unlovable, that it's all your fault. It's not. This is the time that you need to surround yourself with your friends, your family, this brotherhood that you have, the men who love you. You have love from your brotherhood, the men that will lift you up 
the men that will literally lift you up to become the best version of yourself. The guy who's gonna be meditating with you, journaling with you, going to the gym with you, taking cold showers with you. <laughs> Wait, maybe not that, but you know what? Definitely ice baths. Definitely ice baths together. You need to surround yourself with this friendship, this brotherhood, because they will help you get over this. You're not unlovable, man. It's not all your fault. And I know for a fact that your brotherhood and your friends, they will show you that that is the case, that you are not lovable. Wait, what? I got that wrong. <laughs> Oops. Your friends will show you that that's the case, that you are a lovable man, that you're doing the good habits and you will get over this pain over time. I really do hope this video has helped in some way or form. I have been for a lot of relationships myself and you know what? It's actually like one piece of advice that like I have a lot of experience in. So I really wish I could, this can help as many people as possible. I wish this could help you. As always, if you want to make a change and start to improve your life, but you don't know how, subscribe to this channel, man. I will give you all the resources, everything from my experiences and my mistakes so you can learn and so you can start on your own journey. And as always, stay consistent and don't give up. Oh, oh God. Oh my God, I've been sat down on this wooden stump and it's really uncomfortable. All right, come here. You know what time it is, man. All right, self-improvement gives.